I am Krishalatov, Elder Dragon of Wind, Steel Master of the Tempest, and you will be smote by my most powerful attack! Ha <laughs> Oh no! The pain! I will forever miss that 3% of my health. What? Oh yes, my fellow Rise Hunters, once more prepare for the ultimate build to get even ultimater. I'm talking Immortality version 2, thanks to our new Elder Dragon friends. Well, we can become stronger than all three of them combined. And seriously, at this point, I'm not even going to say anything else. Just witness five minutes of Krishaladora trying to kill me while I am completely AFK. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's quite silly. But I don't want you to think this is just about being unkillable, uncartable, immortal. No, it's much more than that. Because in Rise, the immortal build is better than it ever has been. Because thanks to Great Sword, the greatest of swords and the greatest of weapons, I love you. It turns the game into complete easy mode, because Greatsword is now bursting with attacks that don't get cancelled if you get hit, if you combo that with the hit doesn't do damage because you're in an immortal set, you just plow through the monster without ever needing to stop, without ever needing to heal, without ever having to worry about any given single thing the monster ever does. The first time I took this out for a practice, I killed Koshaladora in 15 minutes, which, you know, is slow-ish, but it's also quite quick for a build with essentially no offensive skills, and it can get much quicker without healing once. Not a single time I did not drink a potion at any point. In fact, I spent the entire 15 minutes just attacking. And that's why this is so much fun. It's a build that lets you start the hunt, start attacking the monster, and literally do not stop for any reason until you slay it. And that is so unbelievably satisfying. So how is this achieved then? Well, it comes down to this core grouping of skills. Defense up, recovery up, recovery speed, and divine blessing. They are the core four. And they are the four that let this build in its first version before the update still perform admirably. They pump your defense up to, like, near 500. They make it so you heal half of every hit you take like lightning. They make it so that you only take half damage 20% of the time. But now it gets even crazier thanks to Kashaladora himself, which is why he is the unfortunate testing dummy here. See, he has added to the game a set bonus that we had in World and Iceborne that truly was incredible. The super recovery of Valhazak. This meant that when you take damage, you don't just heal the red portion of your health, you keep healing past that. You just permanently tick up in healing, and these ticks are affected by recovery up the skill. That's very, very juicy. In fact, this build gets so much healing from sources that aren't you, passively, or from Pelicos, that recovery up really is the piece de resistance. So now Kushalada Aura then, borrowing from Val, his three set is that super recovery. It is your healing extends past the red gorge of your bar. My legacy continues. <laughs> And while this might not be the most incoming damage possible, I think this little test here that proves that you cannot physically mega barrel bomb yourself down fast enough to outdo the healing provided from this set. Essentially, look at Three Piece Kashala as you will get a mega potion's worth of healing every 30 seconds or so forever. That's pretty damn good. 
So, what armor is actually, well, giving us this set of skills before we talk about the offensive component of this build with the weapon and such? Well, obviously, it's got to be three-piece Kashala, and the two to accompany that is... Good old Somnicanth legs for that divine blessing, and Rajang helmet, both because of its high defense, but also because it has decent slottage along with heroics. So, when we get down to low health, if that ever happens, sub 35%, you kick in with not just an extra damage bonus, which is nice, but an extra 50 defense. Sadly, we can't fit the third rank, but that's okay, it's definitely the most luxury skill going on here. So, the decorations that you need to put in are as follows. Seven goddamn defensive uh, jewels, and seriously, it's it's always quite the moment to walk up to the blacksmith and be like, yeah, can I have seven um, defense decorations? And, you know, they look at you like you mean attack, but no, you have to stress that, no, it really is, I just want defense, and then you get this kind of vibe. <laughs> You can't help but feel judged, but you know, you gotta, you gotta power on. In any case, you want to finish off Divine Blessing, you uh, want to finish off uh, Recovery Up, Recovery Speed. You need three stun resistance, because uh, doing the offensive component of this with the Greatsword means that you have to not be able to be stunned, because you'll be taking hits left and right during your Rage Slash and Adamant Charge, and if you're getting stunned, well, that's just going to ruin any kind of offensive output you have. Everything else is just kind of left over and a little bit extra as long as you've got the core set of defense recovery up recovery speed stun resistance divine blessing kushala blessing level three you are golden beyond that though the kushala armor gives some handicraft you get bits of maximum might you get the odd little bit of agitator you actually end up with a little spattering of offensive skills which is nice so what weapon are we pairing it with? Well, as you can see, it's Camellios, and the reason for that is threefold. Number one, it has a two slot and a one and a one, and this is a very slot hungry build. It doesn't really care how good the slots are, it just need numbers. So we needed to choose a three slot weapon. Reason two is that despite the Greatsword being an horrible status and element weapon, the poison here is still actually really key. Because this set isn't a damage skill focus set, the damage gained from poison is actually really good relative to the general damage output of it, and it makes it really, really much more effective at the killing the monster while being immortal part of it. Third, with the one handicraft that we get from Kashala, it goes white, and 180 raw with white, it's not the best in the world, but it's actually quite fairly decent, it's really no uh, slouch. And then when we have the ramp up Chameleon Soul, it really just tops it off with a sweet little invisible chameleon venomous shaped cherry. And this soul, what it does is every time you hit the monster, and it usually takes about two to eight hits, you have a chance to gain one of four buffs. These buffs last a minute, and you can't get another one until that minute has passed. Your four options are a huge heal, they are plus defense, they are plus attack, or they are stamina drain reduction. So this, then, is great. Three of the four directly help the build. You're already immortal without a ramp up skill, so getting extra attack just means kill things faster. The heal can come in handy in a clutch moment, not that you'll be in those using this set, but you know, it's cool to see it happen. The defense, again, just more immortality, and stamina is stamina. It's a fun ramp up, it's flavorsome, and it does work in the immortal context. Now, Technically, if you want to go full attack, use the attack ramp up. If you want to go full defense, use the defense. But I like the uh, Camellia Soul and what it does and the roulette nature of it. It's quirky like the monster itself, and I am a fan of using it on the weapon. So, that all said and done then, there is one final piece of this puzzle. Oh, and by the way, talisman-wise, you simply need a talisman that has two of the skills that this set needs and two slots on top of that. So, a fairly hefty talisman cost. I have two recovery up with the slots, but as you don't need rare skills, and as the slots can be one slots, you probably have something laying around. You could just have two stun resistance and two one slots, and the build would work. So, have a dig through your item box and see what you're working with. But past that then is the Palicos. They are the workhorses. <laughs> 
cats. Cat horses of this build because you want two healing palicos. You want them to have a healing bubble, power drum, and uh, the shock tripper or trap. These guys will be doing a lot for you. They will be using healing horns every three to five minutes that are all but a full heal. They will be putting the bubbles and the hibiscus healing down, and when you're not AFK, which is probably all the time using it normally, you can just hit them with your weapon while you're hitting the monster to spike even more healing on you, and it's a big reason why you just never have to stop. That on top of the Kashala blessing, and you end up in a situation where it's actually so difficult to cart. You have to really try. The damage you take is minimal. On top of the fact that Rage Slash and Adamant reduces the damage you take by 30% while charging them, so that's even more. So you perpetually just power charged attacks into the monster while taking no damage, while having massive amounts of healing pouring in from multiple sources and that is a recipe resulting in this just incredible titanic build that lets you topple elder dragons like they're goddamn kittens <laughs> and i for one am absolutely in love with it oh yes i'm so glad we got super recovery it really was so so just oh when i saw it wasn't in base game it really is such a core component for this and it brings me no end of joy that we have seen its return. I really cannot wait to see if this can get even better. I didn't really think it would do from the base build, but here we are. It's got a lot better. Eventually, we'll be able to fit even more offensive skills in. And yes, you could drop a couple ranks of defense to do that and have a play around with it. But of course, we are going full immortal here. In any case, guys, uh, like if you've enjoyed this. Let me know if you use it yourself what you think. Subscribe for more. And, well, enjoy your free Elder Dragon kills, materials, melding, anything you really want. Please support the future of the channel on Patreon down below. A lot goes into these videos, the build videos especially, and I, well, we'll see you soon. A good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye